Okay, so we'd started working on prediction problems that were given to you as word equations rather than as formula equations. Okay, it's not that the method is any different for these types of reactions, it's just that there's more to do because now you actually have to figure out the formulas for the reactants as well. Okay? We didn't get very far into these, um, so what I want to do is maybe look at number 10 together and then have you work on 11, 12, 13, there's 14 and 15. It's in the digital workbook, so I'll call that up in a minute. But maybe let's try number 10 right now, just to kind of have a quick reminder of how this stuff works and what the steps are. Okay. If you get a reaction, oh wait, we can't do that one, that's actually got the products on it. We're gonna do number 12. Number 10 actually has the product for some reason. Okay, so looking at number 12. So when we get a word reaction, the first thing we wanna do is write out the reactants in formula form. Then we can decide what type of reaction it is. Okay, or I mean, if you're really good, you can read the reactants and go, oh, okay, I know that's this kind of reaction. But sometimes it's easier when you actually have the formulas. All right, so I got silver with nitrate. Silver's a metal, so this is gonna be an ionic compound. I'll need to drop and swap it. Silver's a one plus charge. Nitrate's a polyatomic ion, NO3, with a minus one charge. So that compound is good the way it's written, okay? They're both ones, so I don't need to do anything else. And it's reacting with copper two chloride. All right, also an ionic compound. What does the Roman numeral tell me? Two. That the charge on copper is two, right. Okay, because it could be one or two. And it's with chloride, which is a minus one. All right, so when we drop and swap, we're gonna get CuCl2. Okay, so my reaction contains two ionic compounds as the reactants. What's our reaction type? Double replacement. Okay, so in a double replacement reaction, what happens? The metals swap places. The metals switch places. Okay, so basically the metals get new partners. So that means that silver is going to end up with chlorine and nitrate, or sorry, um, copper is going to end up with nitrate. So just to kind of review the steps here, I got the reactants written out, I decided what reaction it was, I used the reaction pattern to figure out what the products would be, now what do I do? I just wrote two products that are both ionic compounds and there's something I didn't do to either one of them. Kai, what didn't I do? I didn't drop and swap them, okay? That's an important thing for me to do at this point. So this is a plus one, this is a minus one, so that compound is fine the way it's written. This, what's copper on this side? A two, yeah, it's the same as it was over here. I can't change the kind of copper I have in a chemical reaction. Dalton says you can't change what you have, you have to have the same stuff on the other side, okay? So I still have copper two plus over here. And it's with nitrate, which is a minus one. So when I drop and swap a polyatomic ion and it needs a number, I have to enclose that polyatomic ion in brackets. All right, so now I've done my drop and swap. There aren't any special elements in this reaction, so I don't have to worry about that. What's my last step? Keaton, what's my last step? Uh, you have to balance. I have to balance the whole reaction. Okay. So I'm going to start with chlorine, because two is the biggest number here. Okay? There's two chlorines on the reactant side, but there's only one over here in the products. So I'm going to put a two in front of that one. Okay? And then that gives me two silvers. So I've got to go back over to the reactants and make sure I have two silvers. Putting a two there means that I now have two nitrates. So I've got to go over to the product side. There's two nitrates over here, so that's good. And there's one copper. One copper looks like... It's balanced. Okay. Everybody all right with that? Okay. So those are the steps. Get the reactants. 
Decide on the reaction type. Use the reaction pattern to predict the products. Check for special elements. Drop and swap ionic compounds. Balance the whole reaction. Okay? Always the same steps. Okay? All right. Try those ones there. Okay? Those are in the digital workbook. If you're having trouble seeing them, they're in the digital workbook. Call them up on your phone. Okay? But I'm going to give you some time, and then we'll go through them kind of one at a time. Every couple of minutes here, I'll come up and do another one. So on number 14, okay, we start out with iron 2 chloride. Okay, the Roman numeral 2 is telling us that this is the iron with the 2 plus charge, and it's with chlorine that has a minus 1 charge. So we're looking at FeCl2, and it's reacting with sodium phosphate. So sodium is Na with a plus 1 charge. Phosphate is PO4 and it has a minus 3 charge. All right, so when we drop and swap, that one we're going to get Na3PO4. All right, so that's what our reactants should look like. Okay. All right, so what kind of reaction are we looking at there? Dominic, what kind of reaction is that? Double replacement. Double replacement. All right, so in our double replacement reaction, the pattern is to change the, pep the metals partners. Okay, so we've got uh, iron ending up with phosphate, and we've got sodium ending up with chlorine. All right, so now I've done the step where I use the pattern to predict who goes with who. All right, I've made two ionic compounds. Um, and so this one here is a minus three. This one here is a plus two. And I know that because it was a plus two on this side. Okay, and then when I drop and swap, I'm going to need a 2 outside of the brackets, a 3 beside the iron, and this one here is a plus 1 and a minus 1, so it's fine the way I wrote it. Okay, what should I balance first? Yeah, I should balance the iron first. Sodium and iron are both 3s, but iron has the bigger charge, so we should balance iron first. Okay, so there's three irons on this side. Now there are three on the reactant side. Doing that gives me six chlorines. So I've got to go over here and make sure I have six chlorines. Doing that gives me six sodiums. Go back over here and make sure I have six sodiums and putting a two there makes my phosphates work out so I know I did it right. Okay. All right, keep going. I'll be number 15 here in a couple minutes. So on number 15, okay, we got zinc oxide. So zinc is Zn. It's a metal, so this is ionic. 2 plus oxide, minus 2. So that compound is fine as ZnO because the charge is already balanced. Reacts with hydrogen chloride. H, which is a plus 1, with chlorine, which is a minus 1. So again, that's another compound that's already dropped and swapped properly. Okay, same kind of reaction as the last one. Another double replacement, two ionic compounds. So the metals have to swap. And the only tricky part about this is that remembering that hydrogen is a metal when it's listed first. Okay, so zinc and hydrogen are going to switch places. So that means that zinc is going to end up with chlorine and hydrogen is going to end up with oxygen. Okay, now this is going to seem weird. All right, when I look at this compound here, I'm going to go plus one, minus two, and I'm going to drop and swap it. I just dropped and swapped what kind of compound? It is water. What kind of compound is water? It's molecular. Weird. But if there's a rule, water's the exception to it. Okay? Water does everything nothing else does. Okay? So in this case, it still gets me the right formula. Okay? It's still true. Okay? And so it works. Right? Same when we write it as HOH, you treat it like an ionic compound and we drop and swap it. Okay? Water is just one of those compounds that you can do that with. All right, the other one here, I got a plus 2 and a minus 1, so I'm going to have ZnCl2. And now I need to balance the whole thing, and a 2 there will fix it all. How many people have done 16? Okay, let's have a look at 16 as well then. So with copper 2 sulfate, that is Cu, and the 2 tells me it's 2 plus. 
with sulfate, SO4, that's a minus two. You guys had that stuff in your first lab. Okay? It was the blue crystalline stuff, copper two sulfate. And it's gonna react with iron solid. Now this one's an important one. We talked about this situation um, a few days ago. Single replacement reactions have the most things to watch for and be mindful of. Okay, that means looking for special elements, dropping and swapping ionic compounds, all of that. But there's also this that can happen. Iron is a multivalent metal. It has more than one possible charge. But when it's in its element form, it doesn't have a charge. So there's no way for me to know what the charge on iron is when I predict my products on the other side. Okay, so first off, what kind of reaction is this? Single, Single replacement. Okay, so I'm going to have to swap the two metals, okay? Um, and so we're going to have Fe with SO4, and copper is going to wind up by itself. Okay, here's where the problem comes in. Iron can be a 2 or a 3, and I can't use what was on the reactant side to figure out which one it was. If this was FeCl3, I'd know. I'd be able to just look at it and go, oh, well, it's the Fe with the 3 plus charge. But... It's not in a compound. It's in its element form and doesn't have a charge. So what do I do? Okay. You take the numbers to the left because that's the most common one. Exactly. The first number listed, the number on the left, in terms of the charges, is the most common charge, and that's the one we use. Okay. So for iron, it's three, right? Okay. So then this is iron with the plus three charge, sulfate with a minus two charge. So I'm going to need a two here. And I'm going to need brackets and a three outside of the brackets. And then I got some balancing to do. I should probably balance the sulfate first. Put a three there, a three there, and a two there, and it should be okay. All right, I'll give you guys a little more time to get ahead of me again here. Eighteen here. So for number seventeen, okay, we've got bromine liquid, which they tell you is Br two. Just be aware. On a test, I would never tell you. Okay, I would expect that you understand that when bromine is by itself, it's a two because it's one of the special elements and it's color coded on your periodic table. All right, so we got Br two and it's reacting with potassium iodide. Potassium is a metal, so this is an ionic compound. It's a plus one. Iodine's a minus one, so we're okay with Ki. Right? What kind of reaction are we looking at here? Emily, what kind of reaction is this? Single replacement. All right, in a single replacement reaction, the element replaces the part of the compound that it is similar to. This is a nonmetal, so it's going to replace the nonmetal. That means that 
potassium will end up with bromine, and iodine will end up by itself. As we said before, single replacement reactions have the most things to check. There's an ionic compound here, plus one, minus one. So it's dropped and swapped, it's fine. And there's an element. Is it special? Yes, iodine is one of your highlighted in yellow elements, so it's a two. Okay. If I forget that, I'm not going to balance this correctly. Okay, so now I've got to balance it. I've got to put a two there to balance my bromines. That gives me two potassiums. A two there balances the potassiums and the iodines. And now it's done. Okay. Looking at number 18, okay, we got zinc. Bromide, zinc's a metal, so this is an ionic compound. Okay. Two plus with bromine, which is a one minus, so we're looking at ZnBr2, and it is mixed with silver nitrate solution. So Ag plus one, nitrate minus one. So that compound is fine the way it's written. All right. Two ionic compounds, so we're looking at a double replacement reaction. We switch the metals. Zinc ends up with nitrate, and silver ends up with bromine. Okay. So always the same steps. Like I'm always just walking through the same set of things, checking it as I go. So I've figured out who goes with who, but now I have to drop and swap because they're both ionic compounds. Plus two, minus one, so I'm going to need some brackets here with a two outside the brackets. This is a plus one, that's a minus one, so that compound is fine the way it's written. And now I need to balance the bromines probably first. Okay, so there's two on this side. Now there's two on that side. Now there's two silvers. Now there's two silvers on both sides. That gives me two nitrates. There's two nitrates over there and one zinc on both sides. Now, if you haven't noticed, okay, kind of look at this as you go through these, but there's a real pattern to balancing replacement reactions. When you go back and forth, back and forth, it almost always works out the same way. Okay, not always the same numbers, but it's always the same way. It's like, okay, I balanced that one. Oh, that made that. So I got to fix that one. That fixes that one, and now I'm done. Okay, it has a very kind of predictable pattern to the balancing. How many people have done 19? Okay, let's have a look at that one. So we got iron 2 sulfate. Okay, we know it's ionic, so we're going to put the 2 plus on the iron. It's with sulfate, which is SO4, and is also a 2, so that compound's fine the way I wrote it. And it's reacting with potassium carbonate, also an ionic compound. So I got K plus 1, and I got carbonate. Why that O is so small? Okay, carbonate, which is a minus 2. So when I drop and swap, I'll need a 2 on the potassium. Okay, so we got another double replacement reaction. We're going to swap the metals. Okay, so potassium will end up with sulfate. And iron will end up with carbonate. All right, so I figured out who, the, the, who goes with who. And now I need to figure out the drop and swap. This is a minus 2. That's a plus 1. So I'm going to have K2SO4. Okay. Um, and then we've got uh, Fe, which is, we were told was a 2 plus with a minus 2 carbonate. So that compound is fine the way I wrote it. And now I'm done. Okay, so there's nothing to balance there. Everything is already balanced. All right, how many people have done the last one? All right, I'll give you a couple more minutes to get that one done. It's very similar. In fact, it's a reaction that's in your lab. Might be helpful in your analysis. So for our last one here, we have lead to nitrate. Um, so that's going to be PB. And the Roman numeral tells me this is lead with the 2 plus, not the 4 plus. Uh, and it's with nitrate. So that's NO3. That's a minus 1. So when I drop and swap, I've got to put that in brackets and put a 2 outside of the brackets. It's reacting with potassium iodide. That's a plus 1. That's a minus 1. So that's fine written that way. Okay, what kind of reaction is this? 
Tap fire what kind of reaction is it? Double replacement. Okay, so in a double replacement reaction, I'm going to swap the metals. That means that lead will end up with iodine and potassium will end up with nitrate. Okay, I just made two ionic compounds that haven't been dropped and swapped. I was told the lead was 2 plus on the other side. Iodine's a 1 minus, so I'm looking at PBI2. And this is a plus 1, that's a minus 1, so that compound is correct as KNO3. Now what do I do? David, what do I do next? Now I balance it. Okay, so I've got a 2 for my nitrates over here, but I only have one nitrate over here, so I'm going to put a 2 there. That gives me 2 potassium, so I'm going to come back over here, put a 2 in front of potassium. That gives me 2 iodines, and there's already 2 over there. One lead, one lead, and now it's balanced. Okay. All right, how are we feeling about that stuff? Okay. Are we feeling like that's something we can do? It really isn't a lot different than when you're given the whole reaction and you have to write it out. Okay. You just have to know the pattern a little bit better. Okay. So next week, you're going to get your kind of final assignment on chemical reactions. You'll have an entire class period to work on it. If you're focused, you can probably get it done. Okay? If not, you'll have a little bit of work to do at home. Um, that said, if this stuff is not coming quickly to you and you haven't practiced it very much, it will probably take you quite a bit longer. So the more you practice this stuff, the faster you get at it. And when it comes to exam time, time's a factor. Okay? Reminder that your exam is coming up. Okay? It is on March the 16th. Okay? Still a ways away yet, but it's coming up. Um, so you might want to start thinking about, is there anything I need to come in and see Mr. Coderre for help with? Stuff like that, okay? Because we really only have one topic left in this unit, and it's the mole equation. And that's what I'll be going over probably starting Wednesday of next week, okay? We'll start the mole equation. We'll probably do mole equation for about three or four days, and then we'll have a unit exam review, and then you'll have your exam. Okay, so it's all kind of coming right up. And I'm not saying that to produce anxiety in you. I'm not saying that to scare you or anything like that. Um, I'm saying it to kind of help you plan, okay? A little bit of time management. You know when things are coming due, okay? You got your reactions lab report on the 9th, your toxin projects, not till the 18th, okay? So it's not pressing. Um, but you probably need to start looking at your calendar Okay, and planning when you're going to spend some time on these things. Okay? I know that some people like to have you know, a bunch of time to just sit down and do the whole thing. Okay? And some people like to say, oh, I'm going to work on it for 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there. That's fine. Just think about when you're going to have that kind of time so that you're not all of a sudden behind the eight ball. It's due tomorrow and I haven't touched it in two weeks. Okay? Uh, just kind of be thinking about that. Um, and in terms of your exam, don't leave the studying for that until the night before. There's too much to go over, and that won't go well. Okay? So do a little bit each night. What does that look like? It looks like you practicing some stuff using your digital workbook. Okay? It doesn't mean that every night you have to sit down and work on science for an hour. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying this should look like is over the next 10 days, 12 days, okay, whatever it is, spend five or ten minutes each night just working on something from chemistry, okay? Do a little bit of formula practice. Do a little bit of reviewing your solubility terms and using your solubility chart, okay? These are things that only take five or ten minutes, okay? Uh, practice writing a few reactions, maybe two. Okay? It takes five or ten minutes, okay? But all of that practice is important. If you're doing it in small chunks like that, you're far more likely to commit it to your long-term memory and retain it for the test. If you cram the night before, you'll remember the first five things you study and the last five things you study, and you'll forget everything in the middle. Okay? That's why cramming is bad. It, it usually leads to people blanking. You ever had that sensation? You open up the test and you're like, oh, I don't remember anything. Probably because you crammed. Okay? And your short-term memory just crapped out on you. Okay? When you cram, it all goes into short-term memory. And as its name would imply, it's short-term. And, and it just 
You know, every once in a while there's like a RAM clearing event and just it's gone. Okay, so um, make sure that you are doing it periodically. Okay, going over some stuff here and there, and that'll really help you to uh, commit it to long-term memory instead. Okay, which in the long run is way better because you have a final exam where you need to remember it in June. Okay, remember I'm available for help lots. If you've got questions, there's no shame in coming in to ask. In fact, it's really smart if you do. Okay, so if you've got questions, there's something you're struggling with in this unit, come in and see me next week sometime, okay, and uh, be happy to help you out. Is that a question? Um, is the key for all these pages in Google Classroom? Yes, I posted it in the stream last week sometime, uh, but it's in there, and it's keys to all reaction worksheets is the name of the file. Actually, I don't think I've got time. Let's just see if we can find it. There it is. February 17th. Okay, so right before the break, February 17th, keys for all reaction worksheets. So it's a PDF file. That's where you can find it if you're looking to practice a little bit at home. And the naming keys, remember, they're like way further back. Okay, um, in there. I don't know why that's in there twice, but it's in there twice. I think this is the type version, so use that one. This is my chicken scratch. Okay. All right, we still got eight minutes here, guys, so don't pack up. Um, I want you guys to try, because we haven't done one like this. I want you to try number one and number three, because we didn't do those Actually, one, three, and five. We didn't do any of those reactions in the ones we did. One, three, and five. Give those ones a try. All right, let's have a quick look at number one. What kind of reaction is number one? It's a combustion reaction. Like I said, we hadn't done one like that yet today. Okay. Products of a combustion reaction are always what? Carbon dioxide, Carbon dioxide and water. Right. Okay. We got special balancing rules. Do we need them both? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we start with a two. Two times two is four. Two times six is 12. Six times two is 12. Four times two is eight oxygens, plus six more is 14. Seven times two is 14. Okay, it should look something like that as a final product. Okay. For number three, what kind of reaction were we looking at? Simple decomposition. So in this one, it's going to break up into its two elements, magnesium and nitrogen. What do I need to check for? Special elements. Do I have any? Which one? Nitrogen is a two. Right. Magnesium is a metal. The only special metal is hydrogen. Okay. All right. Then I got to balance this thing. So I just need a big three in front of this and everything else is good. Okay. And then for our last one here, we got an element reacting with an element. Okay, so this is what kind of reaction? Synthesis. Synthesis. Okay, so they're gonna go together, Cu with F. Here's that problem again. Copper is a multivalent metal and it was an element in the reactants. What charge do I use? Two. two. It's the most common one, so I go with that. Okay, two plus, this is a one minus, so we're looking at CuF2, and it's found. Okay, so probably one more day of reaction stuff, so it'll be a little bit different. Okay, and then the reaction assignment on Tuesday, and we'll be starting mole equation on Wednesday. All right, remember to take some time this weekend to work on your reaction lab. Make sure you're getting that done. Okay, yeah, be happy to look over those before you hand them in.